specific skills you're gonna to wanna to work on with your players to have more efficiency on offense. The first uh, skill that I wanna talk about are stride stops. I value two foot stops in the paint over some kind of one foot finish at the rim. This is giving you more options when you get those world hunts or you get those paint hunts. Okay, stride stops. So we're gonna watch a couple different players, a couple different from a couple different levels, uh, really work on stride stops. Now, this first one is gonna be by TJ McConnell right here. You'll see as he attacks the paint, he doesn't immediately go up and finish, whether it's off of one foot or two feet. But a stride stop is a one, two stop. Now when we go a lot of times, and I don't know what it is about referees, especially at the high school level. So many times when we jump stop and then pivot, they love to call it travel. I don't know if they think that we pick up the foot that's supposed to be on the ground or what, but when our players attack the world, attack the paint and stop one, two, it's going to give them more options. And so watch TJ McConnell one more time. He has a one, two stop. It's his left foot and then his right foot. Now he immediately has drawn the eyes of all five defenders. Because he stride stops, now he can still pivot and find open players on, on his team. Right, right there's Tobias Harris. And this is something I think all of our teams should work on. When we have a world hunt or a paint hunt like this, if the player who's attacking the rim doesn't have an immediate score, you must sprint to open space. Right now we've got Tobias Harris over in the corner over here. But what he does is he will lift up to that action spot at the wing where he gets a wide open catch and shoot three. John Morant right here, right? John Morant, the best player on the Grizzlies. He draws so much attention as he attacks. But what he does such a great job on this one is his one-two right here. Now he's got more time. Again, this is off balance, but because John Morant's so athletic, he can still make a play. And really for all of our players, um, if he jump stopped, he might get confused what foot's supposed to land. He might actually be more off balance. But because he went with a right foot, left foot attack, he's going to be still be more on balance and able to make adjustments. Um, because of this, and he adds a peak fake um, in this inside the paint, he's drawn the attention of all four defenders right here, leaving Jaron Jackson Jr. wide open for that kick out three. You'll see again one more time. Watch Jaw's feet. Uh, watch how his left foot off of the attack actually pivots not only to create a better angle for the pass, but also to get him more on balance before he passes the ball to Jaron Jackson Jr. Boom, right there. He's more on balance. It's a straight line pass. Easy catch and shoot uh, for the big shot right there for the Grizzlies. We're going we're gonna to see this from another angle one more time. As John Morant attacks the basket, right? We know he's an athletic player, but what he does, he maintains poise and he maintains balance with his stride stop able to find teammates in open spots, just like that one. Now let's watch another clip of this. Uh, not only might we use a stride stop to pass, but also to score. Uh, this is Gordon Dragic for the Miami Heat a couple of years ago in the playoffs. And as he's attacking the rim right here, he's got a bigger, longer, way more athletic defender. The Pacers are one of the best teams in the league in defense at the rim. But because he stops with his one-two, he can gather himself and still finish at the rim. Let's watch that from the first angle that we had, right? This is a great example of a stride stop into a finish. He attacks one, two. Now on this, I would love to see Tyler Hero lifting up to the wing. It doesn't happen, but that's okay. Because uh, Dragic right here untimes the defense. He throws them off balance by not jumping right away. He can collect and all of a sudden as a smaller player, he can be more successful at the rim. Uh, let's get another stride stop clip. Let's go ahead, for, fast forward to the next one. All right, here's another example from Villanova with the stride stop action. Great spacing right here by Villanova. All right, off of the attack, we have a one, two to a kick out three. Again, we talked earlier about Saba actions, turning down small advantages for big ones. And this is what this player from Villanova does. On the drive, it's a one, two. And because it's one, two, now he can reverse pivot. He doesn't just try to score off of a paint attack, but it's a one, two stride stop. So now as we're sprinting to open space, we can find open teammates for those shots. Great example of a stride stop right there. We'll go, we'll go one more clip with this one. Another Villanova example off of it. It's a one, two, one, two. So he can gather himself and still finish against contact. Right. That untimes the defense. You can tell right here, this bigger defender is unsure exactly when to jump. Right. The defense does a great job of walling up, but because the offense goes one, two, right. He's got his left foot now as his first foot. His right foot's coming down as his second foot. He's more on balance, can absorb contact, and does a better job of finishing at the rim. 
So whether it's for the scoring pass, whether it's for a score for the ball handler, stride stops. You're going to be more efficient on your offense if you can have your players stride stop more often as they hunt the world, as they hunt the paint.